So it is nearing the end of 2018 and I thought I would end the year with one final video giving you my best of the best apps that I've tried throughout the year and also letting you know which apps I still use to this day. Now, I've showcased 10 different Android applications in each month's episode of Top Android Apps, also 20 in January itself. So that takes us to a whopping total of 110 applications. It's a lot to get through, but here's a quick fire look at my top 20. So from the very first video of the year, I introduced to you my favorite icon pack of all time, the Crichton icon pack. I still use it to this day and I don't really foresee me not using it. It's one of the very first apps I install on any new device I get my hands on. Be My Eyes was really the first app I've ever come across that was about giving to others. It's all about helping the visually impaired by answering video chat questions to help them complete day-to-day -day tasks. And I really do love the mentality behind this application. I featured both the Pixel 2 and 3 camera mods throughout the year. They can take an ordinary smartphone camera and really up the ante big time. If you don't own a Pixel device, then this is an APK definitely worth downloading and using as your go-to camera app. I still have lens distortions installed on my phone, although I don't use it as much as I would like, but it's a great complimentary photo editing app that adds a nice touch of color and light to the images that you take. At one point, Lean Launcher was by far my most used home launcher application, although it's been overtaken recently, more on that later. But this is a very clean pixel launcher that offers great customization ability, and it really is a very stable and reliable launcher. Ever since I showcased the Solid File Explorer application, it has since remained my go-to file explorer and is once again, one of the first apps I install on any Android device I own. The pro version is well worth the money. You won't regret downloading and trying this app out. The Frog Weather shortcut application is so damn simple, it's not funny. It simply provides you with an app shortcut straight into Google's weather feed. And I seriously use this all the time throughout my best Nova Launcher setup series, whenever I want to set up a widget to launch into the Google weather feed, which is actually quite often. I don't use this app anymore because my devices actually run Android Pie natively, but the Android P Rotation app takes a great feature only available on Android Pie and makes it available for any Android device, so definitely worth checking out. As gesture navigation becomes the new way of operating our devices, one of the best earlier implementations was the Navigation Gestures app by the team over at XDA. It is a bit tricky to use given that the navigation bar sits right at the bottom of your display and can overlap with other app triggers and toggles, but still a fun gesture app nonetheless. 2018 really was the year of the notch. And even though it looks like we're starting to move beyond notches on our smartphone devices, Nacho Notch is just a really simple app that blacks out the notification area to blend it in with the notch and effectively hide it forever. I still really appreciate what the PowerShade app does. It can make any outdated smartphone feel fresh and as though it's running Android Pie. So this app definitely deserves a spot on this list. All right, so I mentioned earlier that Lean Launcher was at one point my go-to launcher, and the app that has superseded it is version two of the LaunchAir launcher. I've actually gone ahead and rooted my Pixel 3 XL and installed what's called LaunchStep, and this has in turn allowed me to set LaunchAir as the default launcher instead of the Pixel launcher. And this has vastly improved the experience of using my Pixel device, although I will be making a full video on this at some point in the new year, so definitely look out for that. Share Doctor is a really simple share interface that replaces the stock Android one. It's clean, it's customizable, and it's fast, and that makes it a worthwhile app to download. I'm not a big video editor on my phone, but every now and then I do need to do some minor tweaking before posting to Instagram or Twitter. And my go-to video editor is still InShot. It's simple to use, but offers heaps of options. So that makes it one that I definitely recommend. I've featured a few music player apps in recent times, but my favorite by far is the Stelio player. And it all comes down to the animations when going in and out of music items and menus. And it just makes for a very pleasing experience. Your Hour is an app that replicates what Google and Apple are trying to do with their digital well-being and screen time features respectively in helping us reduce the amount of time we spend on our phones. And I still think if you don't have each of those features natively, then this app is definitely worth having on your phone. Another great gesture navigation app I featured was the Fluid Navigation Gestures application. This is actually probably the best implementation of gestures by a third party app that you can find. The animations are sleek and clean and it works pretty much just as advertised. 
Among the plethora of wallpaper apps I featured throughout the year, I still have a soft spot for the Pixel 3 Live Wallpapers port. This brings the really stylish and visually appealing Pixel 3 wallpapers to any device as long as you have the Google Wallpapers app installed. And I just really like the look of them and how they can bring life to a device's home screen. Daywise was a notification manager application that I featured and still use on any Android device I own that isn't my primary device. That isn't actually really the intention of the app. It's more so designed to schedule your notifications in batches, but if you have a few devices laying around, it can get really irritating receiving double up notifications from weeks ago if you haven't switched it on for a bit. And so this app has really come in clutch. And finally, this is an app I haven't used since featuring it, but I still really like the functionality of the Touch Bar application. It emulates the Touch Bar found on the new MacBook Pro devices and does so quite well, I might say. And so if you're looking to up your productivity game, then this is a really cool app, definitely worth trying out. But that is it. They are the best apps that I featured throughout the year. They will, of course, all be linked down in the notes below. So don't forget to check them out. And also let me know which apps you tried out and tested in the year that have become favorites of yours down in the comments below as well. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, then doing so would be very much appreciated. I've also linked my merch store down in the notes below if you want to check that out. But aside from that, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching throughout the year and I'll catch you later.